I'm Dr. Rachel Rubin, urologist with fellowship training in sexual medicine. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about private parts. You know, the genitals down there. I hate all of that. I really wish that we can get to a place where we can talk about genitals and sexual health the same way we do about high blood pressure and diabetes. In fact, when a new patient comes in and they get a new diagnosis of diabetes, you spend the time explaining to them how their pancreas works. Good Lord, I don't remember all the details because I'm a urologist, but you explain the details of diabetes, how it works, why therapy is important, why treatment is so important, and how it's really important for quality of life. So I would like us to take that same understanding of anatomy and physiology and use it for explaining to patients how their sexual health works. Because when they understand it, they then have the tools to understand how they can make it better. So I always say you got to know what parts you have in order to figure out how they drive, right? We want them to drive better. And so let me give you an example. I have a lot of men who come to see me with complaints of erectile dysfunction, and they are refusing to take Viagra and Cialis because they say, oh my gosh, those are magic pills. Pills. I won't be a man if I have to take those pills. And we all know that doesn't make any sense. And so what I do is I explain to them how their penis works. Sir, your penis is a muscle. The muscle does two things. It contracts and it relaxes, just like your bicep. It's just that your penis muscle is smooth muscle, which means it responds to fight or flight, right? It's on the autonomic nervous system. And I explained to that person that if that muscle is relaxed, if your penis muscle is relaxed, it fills with blood and expands big, 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 and it gets big and hard and it traps the blood. But when the muscles are contracted, when they are tight, it squeezes all the blood out of it, like squeezing out a sponge. And so the important thing, if you want to have good erections, is you need the muscle to relax right? Relaxed muscle increases erections. And so getting them to understand that all Viagra and Cialis are, those PD-5 inhibitors, are smooth muscle relaxers. They're just your muscle relaxers. So instead of saying, oh, I need to take this Viagra or Cialis because I'm broken, it's, oh, hey, honey, I need to go take my muscle relaxers because my muscles aren't working the same way that they used to. And we'll go into future videos about why, uh, what can happen with erectile dysfunction and all the many reasons why it happens. And so getting someone to understand that if we get your muscles to relax, you will have better erections. This is how the penis works. This is why the medicine works. The patients will actually try the therapy and they'll feel so much better about it. They'll say, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. I need other ways to relax the muscles in the penis. So they work on their mental health to relax their mental uh, muscles and to get the, the penis muscles to relax a little bit better. So understanding anatomy and physiology makes understanding the treatments, which then leads to to a better outcomes. How about on the female side? If I have a female who comes to see me and she can't have an orgasm, part of it is education and understanding anatomy and physiology. And so getting people to understand, okay, the clitoris and the penis are exactly the same thing. Remember homologs. So the head of the clitoris and the head of the penis are the same. The clitoris has legs that go all the way down to the butt bones. So everyone is sitting on their genitals right now. Your butt bones connects to the bottom of your clitoris or the bottom of the penis. They each have legs called crura. And so when you get patients to understand where their anatomy is and how it functions, uh, they will then understand how to uh, maximize their quality of life. So for the clitoris, it's just smooth muscle, just like the penis that we talked about. When that smooth muscle relaxes, it engorges, it fills with blood. When you stimulate it, you it can lead to orgasm for the majority of people. But wait a minute, the clitoris is not inside the vagina. It's outside. It's behind the labia majora. It's on top of, if you follow the labia minora up, you get to the head of the clitoris. And so getting patients to understand that, they then will understand that penetration is not the way the majority of people orgasm. And so using anatomy and physiology, I love pictures. I show everyone pictures in my office. They then can understand why maybe vibration will Will help an orgasm happen or outside stimulation on the vulva will allow orgasm to happen. And so instead of patients coming and saying, I'm broken, I can't orgasm from penetration or Dr. Rubin, I'm broken because I can't get erections, getting them to understand the physiology and the anatomy gives them the power to understand what the tools are uh, to better treat it. 
So as we go forward, we'll talk more about anatomy and physiology and how to increase the sexual health of our patients. Please stop calling them private parts. Please use your understanding of anatomy and physiology to educate your patients to have better sexual health and better quality of life. You may be the only clinician to ever do so, and it will make their lives so much better. Thank you.